This episode has been brought to you in part by Canderell and Kingset Capital. Coming soon, affordable luxury condominium living at 908 St. Clair West. Nestled into a vibrant, one-of-a-kind neighborhood, 908 St. Clair West is a modern treasure, offering a sophisticated lifestyle inspired by St. Clair Village and prestigious Forest Hill. Register today at 908stclairwest.com. can't separate being an athlete from being human. If you are indigenous, you can look to the Uyghurs and understand the depossession from the land, the destruction of language and culture, and the theft of children. If you are a Jew, you know what it is happening now is the start of the march to the death camps. That's a clip from a new video created by Mark Grushko of Toronto and a small group of activists. He made it to try to convince Canada's Olympic athletes to boycott the games in China or at least not to march in the opening ceremonies. The retiree, who's spending the winter in Florida, had never done anything like it before, but he hoped to at least educate some of the Canadian team about the genocide, which even Canada's parliament has said China is perpetrating against the 12 million Muslim Uyghurs in the western part of the country, including a million thought to be held in concentration camps. The video did reach Olympic trampoline medalist Rosie McLennan, She chairs the Athletes' Commission of the Canadian Olympic Committee. And while she appreciated Grushko's efforts, she didn't feel the athletes should boycott. She told them boycotts don't work, and instead they'll try to use person-to-person diplomacy when they're in China. Also, she said going to the Olympics doesn't mean they condone genocide. Plus, it was too risky to pass the video on, because if Chinese authorities got wind of the YouTube video, the Olympians might get into trouble. The video is just part of a growing protest movement and events this week organized by Canadians of Jewish faith and time to coincide with the opening of the Winter Olympics on Friday, an Olympics that some are calling the Genocide Games, while others are comparing them to Adolf Hitler's use of the 1936 Olympics in Nazi Germany to whitewash his persecution of Jews. The the parallels between what's happening to the Uyghurs in China today and what what happened to the Jews in 1930s is uh, it's like they're on parallel railroad tracks. And, and my feeling was, this happened to us in the 1930s, and everybody stood by and watched. Nobody did anything. And I can't do that. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, February the 3rd, 2022. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. <music> Mark Grushko won't be watching the opening ceremonies this Friday. Neither will his friend and fellow activist Phil Kretzmar of Ottawa. Kretzmar co-founded the Stop Uyghur Genocide Canada group through his synagogue, Kehilath Beth Israel. And he's been holding a weekly protest vigil outside the Chinese embassy in Ottawa for over a year. There'll be a much larger one this Friday, timed to get maximum media attention, with his own version of the opening ceremonies, including a march with flags, medals for human rights violators, and lighting the flame of freedom. Phil Kretzmar and Mark Grushko will be here to explain why fighting to save the Uyghurs is a Jewish problem. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm Mason Friedman in Toronto, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. In the wake of the truckers' convoy protests that have engulfed Ottawa since the weekend and the appearance of Nazi and Confederate flags and other hateful anti-Semitic and racist symbols, the House of Commons passed a motion Tuesday to denounce these particular things from being displayed on Parliament Hill. The motion was put forward by Liberal MP Anthony Housefather, who's Jewish and from the Montreal riding of Mount Royal. The motion passed unanimously. Phil Kretzmar joins me now from Ottawa, and Mark Grushko is in Coconut Creek, Florida. You both will be heavily involved in Canadian activities, uh, protest marches, protest rallies outside, Canadian-based Chinese uh, embassies and consulates. So let's talk about this poster that you put together. It called it the Genocide Games. Either of you can start. Tell us about the activities that you have planned. Well... The games have become known in many circles as the genocide games because of the activities of the Chinese government. And um, both Mark and myself have really disagreed with holding the Olympics in Beijing. 
and we felt that we wanted to use the publicity and the opportunity and the controversy to really draw attention to those that have suffered at the hands of the Chinese government. So we're really trying to draw attention and uh, raise awareness of something that probably is not going to be spoken about or seen uh, over the period of the Olympics. Right. And Mark, you put together this video that was called um, Don't Turn Your Backs on Us, uh, aimed at the athletes and uh, to, for educational purposes, but also lobbying that maybe they should decide not to go or if they're going to go, at least know what they're going to. Right. Uh, I had previously um, put together a video with the cooperation of uh, some people in the uh, Uyghur Rights uh, Advocacy Project. Uh, it's all, it, it is all Uyghur voices. It consists of an introduction uh, explaining what's happening to the Uyghurs because as, as constantly amazes Phil and I, the extent of ignorance uh, and I don't mean that negatively, just people not knowing what's going on there and people who kind of know something is going on have got no idea of the depth of it. So um, the first speaker talked about what's happening generally. We have testimony from two Uyghur people, a man and a woman who survived uh, incarceration in China and a close off by an absolutely marvelous young woman uh, who is a Uyghur in Alberta. And effectively, what we did was we said, look, you know, as you know, we'd really like you to not go to the games, but we understand that you're going to. And the one thing that we're asking is that you do not participate in the opening and closing ceremonies. And that was, I have to say that I've taken some criticism from people I work with for such a small ask. Why? What, um, what was the criticism? Well, th that, th 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 that asking... Uh, as, asking athletes not to march in a parade was no big deal. Uh, and as Kayum, my Uyghur friend, shouted at me in anger, the only time this has happened, he said, what do you mean they won't skip a game? My family is missing. Uh, so there's this tremendous gap uh, in this discussion. Uh, but the athletes are going to go. What I was hoping was to have a flag with nobody behind it going on to the field at the opening and closing ceremonies. And I was hoping to get on board a group of influential young people being very aware of this so that when they came back, you know, they would say, yeah, you know, it was, it, it was scary and oppressive being there. But if you think we thought it was scary and oppressive, look at what's happening in the rest of China to these other people. The people who are effectively slave laborers making the cotton that goes into the Lululemon costumes that the, that, that the athletes are wearing at the games. That's not right. We had a Canadian billionaire, the co-owner of the Golden State Warriors, right? He said, no one cares about the human rights abuses in China. Phil, you're doing these uh, public events in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a trucker's protest. Tell me how you make space for this. Ellen, you just do it. Um, I mean, I think what he said was ridiculous. I think it's more that people don't know. Um, and we live in a hugely privileged society. Um, and I don't think in many cases we, we fully appreciate that. It, it, it's, it's important to try and make people aware. And um, sadly, I think I wasn't involved in human rights activism uh, before the last uh, year or two. Uh, sadly, it's a sort of a longer term undertaking because while you're doing this, people are suffering. And I guess I just don't feel, I just, this is something I feel I have to do. Um, I can't not do it. And uh the situation of the Uyghurs to me is different from many other people who are being persecuted or are in very difficult situations, whether it's Ethiopia, uh, whether it's in Nigeria, whether it's in Myanmar or elsewhere. You have a very largely peaceful um, population who are just being persecuted by a draconian, brutal central government. Yeah, I mean, I, I cannot stand by and do nothing. The, you know... The chances of me doing anything significant, I have to say, are not huge, but but uh, 
like Rabbi Tarfan says, you know, you, you you might not finish the job, but you can't not not take the job off. Parliament has called it genocide. There are restrictions on uh, using labor uh, or products bringing into Canada. They've only stopped one shipment, as far as I remember. Yeah. Um, but, you know, how, what do you want Canada to do more than it's done? There are a number of things that they can do. Uh, Canada has laws about uh, products with forced labor. They are not enforcing those laws. There needs to be a registry for foreign agents. There needs to be assistance for uh, Uyghurs who want to uh, have refugee status. Uh, Canada needs to work with their allies to have stronger statements. One of the first things, again, I'm going back to this, there's no way that the Canada Pension Plan should be investing 50 billion plus of our dollars in Chinese companies and in interna international companies, multinational companies that are using, uh, that have been identified as using forced labor. Those are starting points. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode and this week of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Tzvia Devor in Hamilton. I wrote about her family in my book Double Threat, which is all about Canadian Jewish soldiers who served in the Second World War. Her late father, Burko Devor, was one of them. And before we end the episode with a clip of Anthony Housefather's motion in the House of Commons, just a friendly reminder to use the word CJN Daily as your promo code to get a $36 discount off the regular price of a subscription to the CJN Circle, where you'll get a guaranteed place on the magazine mailing list, great content like our podcast and events, and exclusive newsletters and important Jewish journalism in this time of rising anti Semitism. Mr. Speaker, there have been consultations amongst the parties. And if you seek it, I believe you will find unanimous consent for the following motion, that the House deplores the use of Nazi and anti-Semitic symbols in demonstrations on Parliament Hill and denounces their use at all times. All those opposed to the Honourable Minister or member moving the motion will please say nay. Agreed. The House has heard the terms of the motion. All those opposed to the motion will please say nay. Carried. Thank you.